volume. So we have a spherical balloon. So volume of a sphere, four thirds <coughs> pi r cubed. As it is inflated, so obviously things are changing. So in this volume equation, both v and r are going to change as it's blown up. The 4 thirds pi is not going to change. So when R changes, obviously the volume is going to change as well. And we're going to figure out exactly how they're related or how the two rates are related. So that's why we call this related rates. In this particular example, when it's inflated, the volume and the radius are both going to increase. But I'm just going to write down they're both going to change. And we can find their relation. So we can find the relation between these rates of change. How do you think we do so? What's the answer to nine out of 10 questions in this class? Take derivative. So the only question is with respect to what? And every question out of 3.8 is going to be a uh, change over time. So everything from 3.8, so change. So these are all going to be over time. So every derivative we take in this section is going to be a d dt. Unlike the other sections, uh, a lot of those were ddx. There's occasions where we took other derivatives, but it's primarily ddx in every other section. So this section specifically, every derivative is going to be a time derivative. So all we do is find ddt of our original So remember 4 thirds pi, even though pi is a letter, it's a constant letter. So it counts as a number. So I'll take derivative to the left side. And I want you to take derivative of the right side. I'll do the first part for you, which is a constant multiple rule. R is not constant. So I pass the derivative through the 4 thirds pi. So that's the constant multiple rule on the right side. So I want you to do the actual uh, compute the derivative of r cubed. So give your best shot. Remember, this is t not matching r, so you have to use that implicit derivative uh, rule, also known as a chain rule. Anybody feel good about their derivative? of r cubed. So we definitely get 3r squared. That should be pretty clear. But what do I multiply this by? I can either write it as r prime or dr dt. So we took a t derivative of a function of r. So at the end we get a times dr dt. And threes cancel. We get 4 pi r squared. And 
And if you want, you can write it as uh, just V prime and R prime. And here's a really important time to make sure you don't write anything to the first power. So you can choose how you want to write your derivative, dv dt, or just v prime, or dr dt, or just r prime. You just have to know, when you just use v prime and r prime, that what variable you're taking derivative with respect to. Because I don't see anywhere in v prime that I took a t derivative. So you just have to know what derivative you took. <coughs> so you might be thinking, ah, oh, you didn't really do the chain rule on v. If you really want to, you could subtract one from the first power, so v to the zero power. And you can write that there. So v to the zero times v prime. And of course, v to the zero power is one. Well, unless your volume is zero. So you could write v to the zero if you want to, but not necessary. So that's how related. If I knew uh, the radius and I knew r prime, how fast the balloon was getting inflated, I could find the change in volume. If I knew the change in volume, let's say I knew that uh, a cubic foot of air was entering every minute, I could figure out how fast the radius is increasing. So if you knew one change, you could get the other change. And that was based off of not how the original changes were related, but off how the original variables were related. We related the change by taking a derivative. So we weren't given the initial relationship at, with the changes. We were given how the original variables are related. And then we took derivative to get the way that the derivatives are related. <coughs> so we're going to do this process for these word problems here. And we're going to start with number one. And unfortunately, I don't have a good way to cut this up and insert extra space right in here. So what I'm going to do. Oh, I could do that. Let's see. Let's see if they'll let me copy and paste text out of this. Maybe I can copy out of this guy. Oh, there we go. Oh, I don't know what happened. I thought I deleted that thing. Ah, oh, all right. Good idea. So this is example one. I'll write the EX above it. So we have a weird word, conical. What does that mean? Conical. If there was an extra A in the beginning, it would be canonical, which would mean typical or normal. What is that word? Like a cone. There we go. So we got a cone, and it's filling at. So they give us a rate right here. What? This is written a little weird. The uh, I think the copy and paste didn't capture all the nice formatting this had. So there should be cubic feet. So when we look over here. I need to rewrite that guy. Then the keyboard plugged in. Oops. So I'm going to write just Q feet, Q fit, cubic feet. So the height is 10, base is 5, 6 feet. All right, I think the rest of the units are written OK. So we have information about the rate of change. What units 
are we using right here? So it's per minute, so that means it's a derivative or a rate. What type of a measurement is cubic feet or feet cubed? It's a volume. So we got a change in volume over time. So actually write uh, delta V <coughs> over delta T. So we got change in volume divided by change in time. Just look at the units. And of course, our notation, this will be dv over dt. I don't know why I wrote delta. dv over dt. So we got information about volume changing with time. So our tank is point down. So draw your best ice cream cone or canonical water tank. So our tank has a height of 10 and a base radius of 5. Now this is an upside down cone, so the, this base will be measured on the top. Obviously the bottom radius would be 0 if you wanted to write the bottom radius. But the base radius is 5 is the top measurement. So any questions about the way I drew the uh, water tank shape? Now this is, how fast is the water level rising when the water is six feet deep? So the tank's definitely not full. It's a little more than halfway full, measured vertically. So I'm going to draw the water level in the tank. And that water level is six. So I didn't write units here, but all these are feet, feet, and feet. What is actually changing with these three measurements here? The water height, the tank height, and the uh, tank radius. What is actually changing? Which one of these measurements is changing? The water height. So the one I wrote in blue. So the 5 and the 10 are constant. So we're going to need a variable for anything that's going to change or anything that's going to vary. So I'm going to need a variable for six right here, so we'll use h for that, for height. I don't want to use a variable for the five and the ten because the tank's not changing size. So you don't want to bring in a variable for things that are constant. We're just going to use numbers five and ten. How do I relate the volume? Now when I get the volume, I need to compute the volume of the water. So I already actually picked a variable for the volume when I wrote dvdt equals. And that volume is, right here water runs into a tank. So the V represents the volume of water, not the volume in the tank. So it was picked right here. So water volume, we'll use the letter V for that. So that's going to change. How do I relate the height to the volume of this smaller cone? And I'll redraw the inner blue cone. So I need the volume of this cone right here. How do we relate volume? What's the formula for volume in a cone? All right, so let's pretend you don't know the volume and you're not just holding out. So how do we construct this volume? So first of all, volume is three-dimensional measurement. So I need to multiply three one-dimensional or linear measurements together. One of them definitely needs to be height. And the other one's going to be basically the base. So for the base, what I need is a radius. Now, is this radius going to change when the height changes? Sure is. So I cannot just use a number. I need to use a variable. So obviously, we'll choose r for radius. So this radius is going to change.
So there's the area of the base, pi r squared. It's the area of a circle. Does anybody know the final constant that goes in front? Should be one third. That's the other constant that you need. Now, if you don't put the one third, and if you leave this out, you're dealing with a cylinder or a cone that doesn't get skinnier at one end. So that one third is the amount, is the difference between if I filled this all the way in and got the volume. It would be one third of that little bit of volume. The reason I'm going through all this, because if you're on your quiz and you don't know how these are related, I want you to think, ah, so volume is three dimensional measurement. So if you look at how this is constructed, I'll bring the pi out front. You can see three dimensions right here. One height times radius times radius. So that's three linear measurements make a volume. If you think about area, area is a two-dimensional measurement, and you see the area is this part right here, the r squared, basically, times some constant. Whenever you have any circle, circleness, roundness happening, you're going to get a pi, no matter what. So if any of the measurements is a circle, you're going to get a pi in there. And that's true even in a sphere. There's still circleness, so a sphere uh, ha also has a pi in it. I'm not going to care that much if you get that one-third wrong. Let's say you think it's four-thirds because you forgot. I probably won't even count points off for that. So if I was using four-thirds, that's a uh, volume of sphere, basically. It's four-thirds pi r cubed. So I won't care if you get the constant wrong. Well, I will care if you put the number zero in there. That'll be a little silly. You won't get anything useful. Uh, but if you put the wrong number in there, I probably won't even count a point off for that. As long as you get, if it has some circleness, you need to have a pi in it. All right, so there's our volume, and it relates to, unfortunately, two variables. Well, we're going to need to get it down to uh, not relating three variables, relating two variables. So we need to knock out one of these two. So let's try to get rid of r. Uh, the reason we need to reduce the number of variables we know how volume changes. We want to know, so let's figure out what we want to know. How fast, we didn't even read this last sentence, or at least I didn't. How fast, fast is a water level rising? So how do I answer that? So it's obviously a rate, rising, changing. So I already have variables for all this. What variable represents the water level rising? D what over DT? Don't need to use as many brain cells. Uh, well, if I write D9 over DT, that'll be 0, or any other number for that matter. There's only two other choices of variables in this problem. So V represents the, the volume in the tank changing. No. But now there's one more left. DHTT. <laughs> so I want to know how fast is the height changing? What's the rate of change of the height? So now that you see the answer, any questions on why we're going for DHDT. I want to know how's the height changing. If, if you want, you can use the letter L and go DLDT if you want to for L for level, but I think height, at least for me, is a better name for that geometric measurement. So I know how the volume changes. I want to know how the height changes. I also know the water is six feet deep. So I know information about how deep the water is at the moment that we're trying to figure this out. What I don't know is the amount or the value of the radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to relate the height and the radius to the other height and radius. So we're going to set up a uh, proportional relationship. So I'm going to come back and erase these. but. Actually, let me change the color. 
and go pink. So I'm going to create two triangles. Probably should use different colors. So I'll have a pink one and go with green. So we got two triangles right there. So I'm going to redraw the triangles separately. Got a big one and the little one. And we have 5, 10, H, V. So now we need to use our geometry skills. What is the vocabulary word for the relationship of these two triangles? I don't think it's congruent. So though. So they'll, they'll be they'll be re related with a ratio, but I think the word is similar. They're they're the same triangle except one is scaled down or scaled up. So they're basically a scalar multiple of each other. So these are similar. Oh, yes. We'd have some serious problems if I related the volume to the height of, of this, absolutely. All right, similar triangles. So this means 5 over 10 equals R over H. And there's lots of different ways you can write, write this uh, ratio relationship right here. But basically, if you compare the radius to the height, this is saying that the radius should be half the size of the height, just based off the size of the, uh, you can call it the constant triangle, the big one on the left side. So we will reduce this. Let's do that cross multiplication. So we get R equals 2H. No, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, one half r over h. H equals two r. That seems better. So whatever the radius is, height's twice as much. And if for some reason you want to turn these into English, height equals is is. So if you read in English, height is twice the radius. So that should make sense when you look at the triangle. You don't have to write out in English very often in math class, but sometimes it's good for intuition if you write out a math equation as a sentence. Uh, a less useful math sentence to write, in my opinion, you could write this. Height equals 2 times radius, but I like the first English sentence better when I'm trying to think about math. This is like literally translating it from math. It's like a Google Translate of some foreign language in English. It just looks horrible. So that's a much better, height is twice the radius. Better for human consumption. All right, h equals 2r. So wherever I see, let's see, I want to remove, I want to know about h, so I want to take out radius. So I want to remove the radius. So we better solve this, divide by 2, so h over 2 equals radius. So wherever I see a radius, I'll replace it with h over 2. So I see the radius right here, so we're going to replace it with h over 2. So we have pi, uh, 1 half squared is a fourth, times a third is a twelfth. So volume is pi over 12 h cubed. This is not the volume of a general or a generic cube, uh, cube cylinder, <sighs> canonical water tank or cone, but 
if you know that your basically your height is twice as big as a the radius, then you can just go off the height and use this formula here. So this only works if your cone has a certain angle or a certain shape to it. And if your cone, if somebody else builds a cone and their cone is a lot wider, this won't work. You'll have a different. You could recompute it, but you'll have a different constant in the front. So this little geometry trick is the, basically the tricky part to this problem, aside from writing your original volume formula. Now we have V and H related. All we're going to do is take derivative and plug in our values. So I know one rate of change, and I'm going to use it to find the other rate of change. So now we're ready to actually do calculus. So we got our two variables. We know how they're related. Now we're going to take the t derivative. So you can take this derivative, no problem. I'm just going to rewrite all your initial conditions that you're going to plug in. This, is, I think, is almost the exact same derivative you took in the beginning of class. Just has a slightly different constant in front. And don't forget your chain rule. You get h squared times dh dt. If you don't do your dh dt, that's what we're going to be solving for. So if you don't have that, you're not going to be you're not going to be able to solve for what you're trying to find. So we got three pi over twelve is pi over four. H squared that's six squared dh dt. I don't know that. And I do know my dvdt volume changing at 9. So I just plugged in the h value and dvdt. So that was 3. I just came from the uh, derivative. So 3 goes oh, okay. out front. And the constant multiple rule I used also. So how do we find dhdt? We're almost there. So we have to get rid of that. You just divide by all that stuff, or multiply by other reciprocal. So we have 9 over 6 squared, 4 over pi. And this should reduce pretty nicely. So we got 3 squared, 2 squared. Let's just factor everything. 3 squared, 2 squared. So everything cancels out, 1 over pi. And of course, we were so that was uh, dh dt. So I was a little more careful. The denominator is written a little differently. It's 3 times 2, whole thing squared. But you can rearrange your terms and cancel. So that is DHDT. Any questions on algebra? Yep. Because when we pulled the 3 over, why is it h squared? Did we take the like, direct over then? So the, you're talking about that term? Yeah, because when we so pulled the 3 because it was h to the third. So you dropped the power from 3 to 2. Okay, so, so like, it was like a derivative kind of thing. Oh, it's, it was exactly a derivative. Like, that's what we were doing. So the, the only actual calculus step was, the only calculus we really used was going from that step to the next step down below. Like the rest of this was really not calculus whatsoever. It was all just algebra and low geometry thrown in. So the amount of calculus you do is really going to come down to one step. 
or you take a derivative. You do have to know uh, how to write your rate of change in terms of your variables. So I needed to know calculus notation right here to write the rate of change of the volume. But the only time I actually did any calculus rules was that one step right there. So now I'm going to show you what not to do. Let's say you plug in your values before you take your derivative. Any guesses on what would happen if you plug in values before you take your derivative? Zero. Things will, too many things will be zero. So if I plug in, you plug in after, after derivative. Uh, this is true for plug in variable values. So I'm underlining variable values. If they're constants, you don't even want to use a variable in the first place. So only use letters when you know things are going to change. So what happens if I plug in first? So this is wrong. Wrong. So original v equals pi over 12 h cubed. So, well, first indication, there is no dvdt to plug anything into. So that should be one indication. Uh, but aside from that, if you just keep going, so we'll reduce this down, 6 cubed, 2 times 3 cubed, 12 is 2 cubed 3. So the twos cancel, and you got nine pi. So before I do any calculus, what does this tell me? It tells me something. Right, what I wrote is correct. This tells me the volume at the moment that the height was six. What it doesn't tell me is how that volume is going to change. So it is true this is the volume. Uh, you might need to know that for certain problems. I didn't need to know that. I didn't ask that in this problem. So I might ask you, what is the volume, and then how is it changing? So this would be part of that answer. Now if I take derivative, what's the derivative of 9 pi? 0. What is exactly 9 pi? A number. Derivative of every number, 0. All right, so if you plug in your values first, you'll get dB dt is 0. You're going to get your rate of change is 0 because it came from an equation that wasn't going to change. Volume is fixed at that number right there. So take derivative, it's not going to change. So this, when you use your math spidey sense, if you get your rate of change is 0, chances are you plugged in. And sometimes you only need to plug in one or two values you shouldn't have plugged in. You may not even need to plug in all the values. If you just plugged in a value, uh, that can lead you to zero.